Hey, RJ Hounds here, back with episode 6 of Let's Play Open TTD. So, uh, as promised, between the uh, last episode and now, I have uh, let the timetable sort out. So this vehicle, or this route here, the extended route um, along MLB, the local line, uh, has its timetable sorted, and I've put a couple more vehicles on there. And same with this main train line, which you can see is going to need a lot more vehicles. But if I go to our uh, group, the timetable is fully filled out, so that's perfect. Uh, also, uh, while doing that, earned enough money to complete the pair loan back down to zero. And one other thing, I did in between videos upgrade to the latest nightly build of OpenTTD. It uh, came to my attention that there was a bug in version 1.5.1 where uh, drive through stations, like the ones that I'm using for literally every bus station on the map, uh, are treated as not a roadblock or a road tile for the purposes of calculating station growth. And that means that, um, for example, when this town wants to grow, it'll look from the tile where this, uh, this name is. So this tile right here, this is the town center, and it looks to grow out in directions, and we'll pick a, uh, pick a random tile to grow on from that center point navigating by road paths, or road tiles. But for example, since these are considered not to be road tiles, it might say, okay, with calculating distance, this route doesn't exist, so it won't necessarily grow up there. It's not too big of a problem for a lot of these towns, but it can have caused the, um, the stations that you place to affect town growth either by slowing it down or causing it to grow away from your uh, from your stations. So that's been fixed, apparently, in the latest nightly builds, uh, and so it should be in version 1.5.2. So I've just downloaded the latest nightly build uh, and switched to that just to get that fixed. It, it shouldn't affect anything else, but you never know. So, uh, now, in this episode, uh, the biggest goal is going to be to sort out some of our capacity, so I'm just going to spam this line with a bunch more trains, um, put a few more airplanes on, and then we'll go from there. Uh, I was thinking that another good thing to do would be maybe start with another um, branch train line, and what looks like a very good uh, place to start is from Tauberheim here up to Heiligenhausen. Uh, and that would also reinforce the idea I had mentioned in the last episode of making an express route that maybe just stopped there and at the two endpoints of this line. So first, let's um, just spam a bunch more trains. You've got to be careful with this, because at a certain point, you will overload these stations. Like I said, these aren't really optimized, and I'm certainly going to need to optimize um, TBH when I build a spur line, but you can eventually just cause your system to get gridlocked, and that can be a real hassle to sort out, especially because all the trains are in the way. Uh, but first and foremost, let's just max it our loan and go for, say, three more trains on this route. And start them in order. Let's put another plane or two on this route. So is the, uh... Do I want to go with the same one? Was it the 707 or the DC-8 was the last plane that I built? I can't remember. So I have 707s. Perfect. So we'll just clone a couple of those. I only have money for one once again, so... That's all we'll do. Things like that, like the, the planes being so expensive in this case, that are why Aviate recommends using a one-to-one -one, um, plane speed, just because everything is a bit more balanced and they're not as overpowered as they are in the base game. Let's get a couple more buses on this route. And this looks like we could use a couple as well. And this as well, the GFG stop. 
this one. It could use a couple more vehicles. The Tauberheim Loop. Give that a couple more vehicles. And this is really just a matter of tuning it in. Um, you'll find that you don't have enough vehicles, and then maybe you'll have too many, but having too many is not the end of the world. The sweet spot is right around full capacity, not necessarily dead on it. And finally, a couple more vehicles on this uh, route. And that should be all the capacity boosting we can do right now. I'm not going to worry about these vehicles being old because I have breakdowns turned off. Um, it'd be nice to find a way how to disable just specifically that message. I spent some time looking in the settings, and you can go. Uh, and where is it? Actually, no, I can't remember if it actually was a setting. I thought there was one that seemed related. Um, Advice information on company's vehicles, but there's other things like invalid orders or trains being lost or trains losing money that I would want to keep. So I don't want to turn that setting down or off, and that might be a little bit tricky. Okay, so now I think we're ready to start building this line out to Harlingenhausen, so I'll just get this loop built. Maybe have a bit of a shorter episode this time, but see how long this takes. So the first thing I need to do is improve this station. What I'm going to do is have dedicated track for each direction, dedicated stops. So these existing stops will be the ones going, uh, let's call it, is it calling it eastbound? Yeah, calling it going eastbound, and this will be for the westbound. use one-way signals like I do in a row row station. I remove this track that I no longer need. Perfect, and then just by maybe expanding some of these merging lanes, Changing up some of the signals, this will basically be ready. I don't need these guys. Nope. Perfect. Nope, not quite. So one further optimization I could make is by having this come out on that side, on the uh, on the north side, like I did here. Um, you'll note that the train comes in on the south end of the platform and leaves on the north end. And that's just so that these two routes, these two tracks, are both the exact same length. So the Pathfinder won't favor one or the other, uh, and so the trains won't uh, gain or lose different amounts of time on their timetable, depending on which station they stop at. It's actually completely optional. And once again, it's just a little optimization you can make, but I don't think it's going to make or break anything at this point. Uh, one other thing I want to do is put, make this a path signal coming into the station. Perfect. And now what I can do is say, for example, have just this, um, this westbound stop be the one that the trains from Heiligenhausen use. So for the sake of this spur line, 
this can be just can basically a two-track railroad station, or be expanded as need be. Once again, we'll deal with the optimization as we get there, as the need arises. And then build a railroad station here. Pull this back over this way. Those, of course, can be all built a bit more compact than I am, but because there's no competitors on the map, either AIs or humans, I'm not too worried about the space that my system is using up right now. So I'm actually going to jog to avoid that town just a little bit, and I'm still probably close enough that I'm annoying its uh, local authority, but I will eventually have some sort of service there, and so keeping this separate might be a bit of a boon. So actually what I'm going to do here is start planning how I'm going to join. Oh, I'm not having too much luck with my clicking today. Alright, so that is the, the way into the station. So it actually looks like my um, left and right hand drive are going to be reversed on this track. This is going to be a left hand drive track, but that is not a huge problem. I could flip this around somehow to do that, but I don't think I'm going to bother. Leaving this track, or getting back on that line, I'm going to build a line coming out this way. Yeah, so to flip the left and right hand side, just because of the way I've joined this up, I would have to um, cross track somewhere either. I could join these in with the... Um, the eastbound track here, or I could just have the two paths cross up here somewhere. But the return on that is pretty small for what is, I believe, just going to be a little spur. Oh, I'm out of money again. Probably just going to be a little spur going to these two towns. I don't see this actual track ending going anywhere else. But there will probably be more spurs off the station of Heiligen Housing.
so that's actually going to come back a little bit. Actually, this... I know I'm only going downhill down, so this can be a little bit tighter as descent. If it was going to be a two-way track, I'd want to worry about it because this would be a uh, slow trans down to climb, but that's not the case here. Oh, so where did I say that needed to be? Out to here. So I'm going to to bulldoze this. This track will be complete. Bam. signal off the station. One other thing I'm going to do is make this a path signal. It's not going to be too much of an optimization, but theoretically a train going down this path or can move forward before this uh, train going the other way is completely clear of this, um, this signal or vice versa. I don't think that will actually ever happen in practice because the gap between them will be at least three tiles long just because of the, the station design here. But once again, it's just something that could be a, a small optimization. So I'm going to give this a standard name, so how about HGH? Give it a depot, preferably a train depot. Fast forward a bit to have enough money to build the train. Perfect. So put that in its group. I also realize here I need to rename this group, because it is now ABG to EDG. So now I'm going to close that timetable there. So let's butter up the, uh, the local authority with some trees and then get some local bus service going on in this town. Oh, that wasn't too hard to do. This so once again, on a 2x2 two two grid, it's every two blocks you want to stop. go all the way over there. That's barely picking up anybody, but hopefully the town will grow. So east, central, and west. Slap in a depot somewhere. Go for the double-decker bus 
else we've been using. And a new group, which is going to be the local HGH group. One more thing I am going to do, because some of these vehicles that are very old, even though very old isn't a problem, are actually, if we look, they are older models. So these are the older double-decker buses. Some of them will start being the slower um, intercity buses. So I'm actually going to set some replace vehicle orders. So I'm going to set these Whitcomb double-decker buses to replace by the Hereford ones. Replace only old vehicles. And do the same for the, uh, the Pioneer bus. The, uh, the Scenic Cruiser coach is now available, which is 50% faster. And so that um, I'm going to start using as well. But once again, only for old vehicles, just to manage the budget. I might as well get a um, vehicle's full use useful lifespan out of it before I replace it, even though, once again, um, expired vehicles don't really matter with breakdowns disabled. So this guy's ready, so add my slack. And this guy's ready, so add the slack to that. So sometimes you do see towns, or stations when they generate like that one had seven days in it. That's just because of the um, the loading time there. There was enough vehicles, or enough passengers waiting that it actually had a full load to unload and load, so it took a bit longer um, than it typically does. Um, you can either leave those there, or, um, or just make them consistent. I find it's better to have the, or not better, but it's my preference to have the time waiting at each station be consistent. So I could bump this up to five or six days later if I noticed that vehicles were getting slower and slower, but if I'm at full capacity, I expect a vehicle actually stopping and needing to take its time to, to load or unload just because of the number of passengers there to be the exception rather than the rule. So, so slack elsewhere in the timetable should make it up. It's true that a, a vehicle might lose a day or two at a station that's it's got to do a full unload and then full load in, um, but that will, I mean, hopefully if it arrives a day or two early like it will with the slack in the timetable, um, it won't actually get late, and if it does get late, it can just gain it, uh, gain that time back up in the next uh, stop on the schedule. So we've got that connected. Um, it will probably eventually want another train as well, and we'll want more buses in this local route. Looks like we're going to also need um, more trains and more airplanes along this, uh, these main lines, um, and we're getting getting there as far as dialing in the, uh, the number of local vehicles. You can see this one sorted out its capacity problem. TBH is looking better, uh, as is EDG, so we're, uh, we're getting pretty close to dialing in our, uh, our capacity. Um, and that's really just kind of an iterative thing. As towns grow, you need more and more vehicles and more and more routes to deal with them. So I think I'm going to end it here for this episode. It doesn't look like there's anything that I need to do in between episodes. So in the next episode we can look at um, either building another spur route, either off this one, starting to pick up some of these other towns. For example, this looks like a pretty good conglomeration to extend to next. I can maybe build just a route that comes from here and goes... Maybe all the way to here. These two towns is one stop, these three towns is another stop. That could be perfect. And then after that, maybe start looking at pulling in some... or building some... Um, some inner city type or intra city type um, rail transit. Like this is a great place, great candidate. If I built like a ring train around this, I could actually move a lot more passengers and more efficiently use these buses. So those are the two things we can talk about in the next episode. Uh, but
until then, I've been RJ Helms, this has been Let's Play Open TTD. so thanks so much for watching once again. Leave any comments below if you have any, any questions or any feedback, and please like uh, this video and subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this, and I will see you in the next episode.